All right, guys, so Westworld. So season two is about to premiere in like maybe a week of when I'm recording this. April 22nd, yeah, more or less a week. So I decided to watch the first season. And I know I'm watching like Game of Thrones as well. But I thought maybe I'd take a break from Game of Thrones because really nothing's happening. And it's actually kind of boring me. I'm being completely honest with you. It's kind of boring me. So I decided to try something new on HBO, Westworld, that seems to be growing kind of a big fan base. So I thought, yeah, why not? Let's do it. So now I'm watching Westworld, which actually has a pretty interesting story of how it came to be, I guess. I guess originally it was a 1973 movie called Westworld, and according to Wikipedia, it's more like a thriller type movie, but I guess it's more like a horror movie, at least that's what the poster looks like. I actually need to watch this movie. It looks pretty interesting. Kind of seems like a corny type horror movie that's kind of stupid and kind of ridiculous, I think. What's also weird is that it has a sequel called Future World that was released in 1976, so yeah, I'm thinking about watching these just to get some overall context, I guess, but I don't know, whatever. So also, this series is actually like made by J.J. Abrams. Like J.J. Abrams is kind of like one of the main story people, one of the main like creators of this show. He also like executive produced it, so which she kind of also did with Lost. So honestly, I was kind of intrigued because me by myself, I actually really enjoyed Lost. I mean, it kind of lost me at the last season because none of the questions were answered, but leading up to that, I kind of liked everything else. So I was a kind of intrigued as to what this show had to entail because it was based off a movie. It didn't look uh, anything like the trailer to the movie. The trailer to the movie looks like this cheap exploitation type horror movie, I guess. That was kind of big in like the 70s or whatever. The trailer to this show looks like it was more of a futuristic, more of a industrialized type thinking show. I could just tell it's more of a thinking type show. And to be quite honest with you, I like thinking type shows. At least it gives you something to think about and speculate about. And not like the first season of Game of Thrones that's really boring and just talks and talks and talks about nothing. Rather just myths and not like actual, I guess, story plot or whatever. As you might tell, I'm going to compare Game of Thrones, at least of what I've seen up to that point, which is episode 8 of season 1, granted, but I'm going to compare this season of Westworld to Game of Thrones, just how much I like, like this show more than Game of Thrones. Because honestly, even though this show is I'm one episode in, I really, really enjoyed it. And yeah, this is season one, episode one. I guess I should give you the name of the season because these seasons have names for some reason. Probably give it, to, give it an edge or something. This is season one called The Maze, while season two is called The Door. I'll probably figure that out when I watch the, the rest of the show, I guess. But yeah, season one, The Maze, episode one, The Original. And let me just say the key word for this episode is intriguing because this, this episode just really left me with a lot of questions. Like J.J. Abrams really loves his what's in the box type thing. Like where is this going to lead? How is this going to entail for the other characters and all that? How, where are we doing here? How are we going to get out? What's going on type of stuff. And I got that from this episode. It was kind of weird to an extent. 
and left me with a lot of questions that were really simple and to the point, other than Game of Thrones, where I was still, after episode 8, wondering what the heck is going on. So the intro is really intriguing, where we got, like, the robots being made and whatever, which is pretty fascinating, especially since we see the robots be made pretty much almost exactly like humans, where they have, like, muscles and bone structure and skin and all that. I mean, even though they have robotic skeletons or whatever, it's kind of undermined by, like, muscle tissue and a bunch of other stuff that humans have. It's out, It's really... It's really interesting is into how it actually worked. Also, the right off the bat, the camera work and use of color and sweeping landscapes and all that are used very, very perf perfectly, honestly. It's very, as close to perfect as you can probably get, especially for a TV show. I mean, while you're in the park... Like, Westworld, I guess, is like a park that people go to to let off steam and pretty much live out their fantasies. Like, they do whatever they want. They can either, like, stay in the town and have sex or go off and have adventures and all that. They can get drunk. It's pretty much Las Vegas if Las Vegas was a Western theme park. That's pretty much what I can say about West Westworld, but... The weird thing is, inside Westworld is really beautiful with all these perfect landscapes and sweeping colors. It, it's The use of color and camera work and everything else looks like a Western, but it feels like you're living in paradise with the bright abstract colors, honestly, and the brightness of it in the saturation whereas if you go down below the park and you go into the laboratories where all the scientists are and where all everything like works and all that where they fix a lot of the robots and all that that is really dark and feels like you're boxed in the use of editing and camera work and color there is very fantastic as well and it's kind of a use of contrast here a little bit where it, when you're in the park, you are free to do whatever you want. Whereas when you're in the laboratory, you're stuck there. Also, let me talk about the flies. Now, I, trust me, there's a reason for why there's flies and all that. I'm talking about flies and whatever. So in this episode, there is a really big emphasis on flies and Here's the reason why. The robots, they don't really care for flies. Like, they, flies just land on them. They don't really feel them or really sense them or anything. Whereas humans, humans see flies. They sense flies. They get irritated with the flies. But the robots don't. So, if you ever want to know whether or not a person is a robot... Or a person is a person. Look at the flies. If they get irritated by the flies. Then they're probably humans. And there's a big emphasis on that. In this show. Now let me get back into comparing this show to Game of Thrones. Because th this is something really really big. So with Game of Thrones. They kind of at least in the first season up until episode eight, there is a lot of goriness and a lot of sex. Pretty needless, but, and yet kind of, I guess that's how the show works, I guess. You see a lot of blood. You mean It shows that they are not invulnerable. You see a lot of sex, so you can actually get, like, I guess, kind of intrigued as to what they're saying because there's a lot of talking and there's a lot of talking in this show too but here's the difference though i mean yes there is sex in this show and yes there is blood in this show but here's the difference though they don't rely on the blood and they don't rely on the sex 
in order for the show to pass off as a show. The goriness is there for a reason. The sex is there for a reason. It's to show that the robots, they're in an endless cycle. Like Teddy, for instance. Teddy, who, by the way, is seems like a good soul. He's a robot, of course. And he seems to be developing actual thoughts in the show. And I'll, I'll develop that more later. But Teddy, every night, I guess, someone kills him. And then the people take Dolores, who's actually the main character, and I'll dwell into her character later, but takes Dolores into the barn and screws her, like actually rapes her and all that. That is their purpose in the park. And it happens, for the most part, every time, every time someone interacts with Dolores or whatever. So it's gory when it needs to be, and it's not just there just to, I don't know, just to get people to watch the show. And the sex isn't just there to have sex. Yeah, there's, it might seem needless, but it works with the overall context of the show. Like, it shows that the robots have no choice. They're being used as objects, which technically they are, but they're developing thoughts. Like with Teddy, let's get into the characters, okay? Just really, real fast. Dolores. Dolores is kind of the main character, I think. That's what they're kind of leading up to or whatever. She's a robot, and she's the oldest robot who are called hosts, I guess, in the park. And Teddy seems like he's developing actual thoughts because I think they're, he's kind of like remembering some stuff which no host is supposed to do, but yet he is doing it. So there's kind of intrigue as to what Teddy is going to do, and what he's going to, I guess, achieve, I guess. And the drama throughout this entire episode is extremely real. It's pretty much taking something that we've seen in TV and movies all the time where people are slaves, I guess, and they can't really do anything about it. We've seen like the Ten Commandments and among other movies or whatever. And they use the same approach here where the robots don't even really know that they are slaves, but they are slaves to their masters, which are men, and they use them in a very degrading way. And it's also kind of intriguing that they don't like specify everyone's names outright like they do with every show they kind of let you kind of dwell into the world and kind of look for the names i guess and yet throughout this entire system that they have there seems to be something else that's going on i mean i'm not totally sure it's like the robots are kind of maybe developing some kind of consciousness i guess because there's the sheriff father who's the father of Dolores and all that. I forget his name. I couldn't catch it. But he has some depth to him. And he seems to realize there's something more going on than just what's going on in the surface, I guess. And then something happens to him or something like that. And or I don't know. I guess they took him in to like reprogram him or something. Because I guess they were he was developing some kind of consciousness. And then there's this black cowboy, like, not like that kind of black. He's like, wears a lot of black clothes or whatever. He seems like a really compelling villain. He seems to have a lot of potential. I mean, he seems really dark and really mysterious and all that. That we'll probably, probably see a lot more into his character as we go on. But anyway, he has, the actor who plays him has tremendous chops. I didn't catch his name either. All I know is just like the, I call him like, the black suited cowboy or something like that. But anyway, he's has a very ominous presence, very well acted, very well acted. I'm pretty sure we'll find maybe hopefully some um, answers to what he, what he is or where he is, whether he's a robot or whatever that's gone rogue or something. So yeah, there's that. And 
Then there's Bernard. Bernard, he's all right, I guess. He's like the main scientist or whatever that helps the robots out and all that. He wants to admire progress at all costs and stuff like that there. There's nothing really to his character as of now, but as as I've also said, there's 10 episodes and it's the first one, so they're trying to set everything up. And that's where the episode kind of struggles, I guess. I guess we're getting into the bad right now. So it's kind of minor pinpoints as to what this show kind of suffers from, this episode. I mean, there's this one kiss between two guys. That's not... I mean, there's no real reason as to why that went down. I mean, even if there was a guy and a girl kissing, it's it's just unwarranted. It's not like... It's like, I guess they're in love, but, I mean, you could have just... I, I don't know why that just bugs me, but it kind of does. Even if it was a guy and a girl kissing, it just bugs me that that one thing right in that speck of time was in this episode. I, I just don't know why. It was just... I don't know. I just didn't really need the kiss, I guess. Maybe you could just say I love you or something like that. I mean, it was kind of out of the ordinary because I guess not everybody kisses like that in that specific moment in time. You'll see it when you watch the episode, if you watch the episode. But I don't know. That just kind of... It was kind of like... It was really just annoying to me for some reason. I don't, I don't even know why. Speaking of annoyance, there's this very British cussing tech guy who cusses all the time. And I guess he was cussing just to get that TVMA rating, I guess, just to make it over the top. Like TVMA, get that TVMA rating. Because there's hardly like anything really to do it except for the nudity and the blood. But sure, let's have a British guy saying a bunch of cussing words or whatever just for the hell of it, whatever. And that goes the same with the most of the tech people. They're either annoying or boring or both. It's just – it's it's interesting as, as to why that happens, I guess. Maybe they're trying to pull like a whole type of thing, I guess, where the humans are like douchebags and the – Robots are more of a compelling characters or something, but the black cowboy, I don't know if he's a robot or a human yet. I don't know if I don't know if Anthony Hopkins is a human or a robot really yet. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's a human, but I haven't I don't know for sure. And here's the biggest downfall, I guess, for this show. If this show is to continue to go on as it is right now, um, where Game of Thrones kind of doesn't really cuss a whole lot, where it kind of is, yeah, they say like cuss words, like, I don't know, excuse my language here, but bastard, dick, maybe the C word, maybe other, a few other words or whatever. Its main focus is the blood, the gore, and the sex. Here, it's more along the lines of the cuss words. And I mean, yeah, I know people cuss. People cuss all the time. But not everybody cusses this much all the time. Like, everyone in this show, all, like, all the scientists or whatever in the show cuss all the time. Literally, every sentence that they have has a cuss word in there. Even if it's a small one, like damn or hell, it's it's kind of uncanny how really how this cussing in HBO actually works. Like all the shows in HBO either like cuss all the time, have sex all the time, or have gore all the time. It, it's really fascinating as to HBO shows now. And pretty much the main criticism I have to this one episode not the whole series like going forward I guess but just this one episode is that 
they throw a lot at you. Like they throw a lot of exposition and a lot of stuff at you. And you don't really know exactly what the heck is going on still because J.J. Abrams in his box. But still, it's kind of HBO too because you, I still don't know what's going on in Game of Thrones. And I'm on episode 8 of season 1. So there's that. But still, there is a lot of philosophy. There is a lot of scientific bar bargaining or jargon and all that there's a lot of like like with game of thrones a lot of explaining the world rather than showing us the world it's kind of explaining like every little aspect of it and it's i mean you can do this throughout the show i mean i'm i'm sure i am positive there is a lot more than they are telling us but Still, this is a lot to take in. I mean, that's pretty much what Anthony Hopkins does. He pretty much just tells us the whole thing. And we don't even know if he's lying or not. Which kind of is a very good, like, compliment I have to Anthony Hopkins because he acts very well. I mean, he acts a certain way where you don't really know if you're t he's telling the truth or not. I mean, still, it kind of... It's, which kind of leads me into another thing where you don't actually know if what they're talking about is real or not. Which I guess is why it this show intrigues me more than Game of Thrones. Because Game of Thrones, everything that they say is true to an extent. In this show, you don't know if what they're saying is real or not. And plus, it's not like in the past... Where you have to just assume that it happened and just go from there or whatever. No. It's happening right now. So if it's real or if it's not real, you will find out eventually. I mean, that's what it seems like. Because it's happening right now. And didn't happen like thousands to a million years before what's going on right now. So... I guess that's why it kind of intrigues me more than Game of Thrones. But still, it's still got a long way to go to being an actual, like, show in my my sense, I guess. Even though it's really intriguing and very fascinating, it's got a lot of potential. And I hope that this show carries it to the very end. Because there is some stuff in this episode that kind of shows that it's, got, it's going to build upon itself. Like Dolores at the very end, spoiler alert by the way, but at the very end, she hits the fly. No other like robot or host or anything except for a human has hit a fly or even noticed that the flies were there. But Dolores saw the fly and she hit it. Which means that if this is a Katniss Everdeen type thing, she's going to be the one to lead all the robots against the uprising or whatever, you know? And the last thing that I will detail about before I move on to the next episode is the music. The music sets the stage for this show to the nth degree. Without this music, you would not have as great of a show, probably, if... Without it, because the music in this show is very ominous and very questionable. You're always like guessing, makes makes you really guess and think about what's going on, whether or not this is real, whether or not this is fake, whether or not something's going to happen. It's almost like very tense music is throughout the entire show, but in a good way. It, it's more of a variation i guess it kind of sets the stage as to what this show will become and i'm honestly really excited i'm more excited to watch this show more than i am to watch game of thrones and it's really surprising because i love fantasy stuff i love lord of the rings and what lord of the rings did and what lord of the rings is as a story 
But Game of Thrones doesn't really seem like that. It seems very, very painstakingly long. Whereas this show, yes, is still very painstakingly long, but it makes you intrigued as to what's going to happen. You know, it's not like stuff just playing out and you're just sitting there watching it. You actually feel like something's going to happen. You actually see that something is going to happen in the near future. Whereas Game of Thrones is happening like season seven or whatever when it's finally coming down. And honestly, I cannot wait until episode 10 where I finally see maybe something happening. And I just hope though that it's not like Lost where the final season of it was just garbage. Especially the final episode. The final episode was just a train wreck. I'll probably do a maybe a, re a full review of it. Like I'll review the entire series maybe. But I, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to really think about that. But anyway, comment. Let me know what you think of Westworld. Subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. More content coming your way. Take care.